On August 21st, three hospitals in the suburbs of Damascus informed MSF that they had treated 3,600 patients displaying neurotoxic symptoms. Syrian doctors treated them with atropine supplied by MSF. 355 of the patients died. The patients who arrived in considerable numbers at the three facilities we support all displayed the same neurotoxic symptoms, vomiting, respiratory distress and blurred vision. Some patients were paralyzed and died immediately. MSF's statement received extensive coverage and was on occasion misreported. These cases reported by the Syrian doctors cannot substitute for an investigation by UN experts. It is the investigation and its findings that will determine if a chemical weapon was used or not. The Syrian doctors are also unable to say who is behind the attacks. MSF's declarations cannot be used to justify military intervention in Syria. The population has been exposed to extreme levels of violence for over two years now, and this influx of patients displaying neurotoxic symptoms compounds an already catastrophic humanitarian situation. Population displacements, the destruction of health facilities and the obstruction of humanitarian aid only add to the suffering of the Syrian people. For 22 years, MSF negotiated with countless authorities, armed groups and civilian leaders to be able to intervene in Somalia. But these same authorities have tolerated or even participated in two recent events that triggered MSF's decision to withdraw from the country. The assassination of two of the NGO's staff in Mogadishu at the end of 2011 and the kidnapping of another two members who were freed summer 2013 after 21 months of captivity. Given that the organization is no longer able to ensure the safety of its patients and humanitarian workers, it has no choice but to close its projects in Somalia. The needs are immense in Somalia, as the country has lived through 22 years of war. There are no state-run hospitals that are able to provide medical care to the people. Attacks on staff, assassinations, kidnappings and threats, these are what MSF's field teams have been subjected to for 22 years. Between 1997 and the end of 2012, our organization has lost 16 of its members. MSF has made great sacrifices to help the Somali people. If and when conditions allow, MSF may return to the country. In the meantime, the organization will continue its work with those who have fled from Somalia to Ethiopia and Kenya in order to survive. Every day sees some 200 under 15 year olds arriving at Bria District Hospital. It's the rainy season and 75% of them have malaria. The others need medical assistance for respiratory tract infections, diarrhea and malnutrition. In this forsaken region, most health facilities no longer function. Following the political and military events early this year, Numerous health centers have had to close. Many health workers have been forced to leave the region, and there's also the problem of drug supplies. So Bria Hospital is one of the few facilities available to some patients. Some of these families are displaced. They have come to Bria in search of relative safety. Others have sought refuge in the bush after leaving their homes to escape from armed groups. They don't have enough food, they have no access to clean water and are at the mercy of mosquitoes and therefore malaria. Along the road to the hospital, they often fall victim to bandits. Myriad factors hindering access to health care, increasing the risk of disease and making people more vulnerable, especially the children.
We're in Bubakwanga Transit Camp, close to the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Intended for 12,000 people, the camp currently hosts twice that many. The upcoming rainy season is likely to make conditions even worse for the refugees. We're having to share plastic sheeting. There are no rooms, no roof. And with all these kids, it's a real problem. And when it rains, we spend the whole night in water. In such conditions, maintaining acceptable levels of hygiene to avoid the spread of disease is a real challenge. MSF teams handle the provision of clean water and construction of latrines. MSF also provides health care to mothers and children, vaccinations and treatment for malnutrition. Every day, some 300 people come to the health facility seeking medical assistance, usually for respiratory tract infections, malaria or diarrhea. Victims of sexual violence can also receive treatment here. At the end of August, the transfer of refugees to a permanent camp 150 kilometers away was initiated. MSF is accompanying the refugees and gradually relocating its activities to the new camp. A health unit in the reception area allows for a fast assessment of needs and ensures continuity of care for malnourished children. Since the beginning of the year, MSF has treated 128 victims of sexual violence at its hospital in Port-au-Prince. One third are not even 15 years old. An eight-year-old girl and her mother are waiting to see the doctor here in the mental health department. Her mother explains what happened. Yesterday, I sent my daughter to my sister's for the day. When she got home, there was blood on her dress. When I asked her about it, she told me a boy had taken her to a deserted place and sexually assaulted her. The little girl receives medical care, including treatment to prevent the risk of infection from the HIV and hepatitis B viruses, for example. She is also issued with a medical certificate so that her family can file a complaint. Then, the psychologist Naomi talks to her. I can say that for the time being there are no perceptible psychological repercussions. However, what I usually do for our patients is wait a week and then get them to take the trauma screening questionnaire, which allows us to identify if they're likely to develop what we call post-traumatic stress disorder. So through this test we can see if a person is susceptible to PTSD or will quickly get over the trauma. The shame experienced by rape victims and the lack of information on treatment often result in a delay in receiving appropriate care. After 72 hours, the team can no longer supply the drugs required to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. These are the reasons why MSF is set to launch an information campaign for Haitians and recruit more staff to care for victims.